I'm going to start with a poem that I wrote <laughs> when I wasn't very happy.、Um, I actually wrote this a year ago, but again, as if you know depression, it comes back. It's a reoccurring thing that you can't really swat away. Anyway, <clears throat> who am I? Who am I trying to be? Not myself. Anyone but myself. Living in a fantasy to bury the reality, making myself the mystery, a strong facade disguising the misery, empty but beyond the point of emptiness, full to the brim of fake confidence, a guard that will never be broken because I broke a long time ago. I am hurting, but don't tell anyone. No one needs to know. Don't show, or you've failed. Always okay, always fine, always on show. The show must go on. It will never stop. The show must not go on, but I know it will. I give up. I give up giving up. I am lost. I don't need to be saved. I need to be found. Basically, it's kind of just <laughs> the same reoccurring thing of,、uh, yeah, not knowing who you are and, and feeling. Love. And that's really, in one sense, I think, must be why you're incredibly popular, because that's a kind of a, a feeling of alienation that a lot of young people have, whether、yes. they're a, a model or, or <clears throat> not these days. Yeah, and I think again. So yeah, this started when I was about 15 years old. I was at school.、Um, I really wanted to do well at school to please my parents, to please my family. I didn't really care that much about school because I knew I was never going to be very good at it.、Um, I think I pushed myself so far, got to the point where I had a bit of a mental breakdown.、Um, Were you clever at school or stupid? <laughs>、um, I was one of those people that just like just did enough work.、Mm, lazy. But again, I、yeah, probably I I um I have very bad learning disabilities. So if you look at my writing, it's it's not it's not it's not good at all. It's probably like a nine-year-old boy if you know what that looks like.、Um, but I was you know just pushing past. Uh, yeah, so I got to the point where I went a bit mad. I was completely suicidal. Didn't want to live anymore. I thought that I was completely alone. I also realised how lucky I was and what a wonderful family, wonderful friends I had. But that didn't matter. I wanted the world to swallow me up, and nothing seemed better to me than death, which is completely insane. So I got taken out of school, went to therapy, got put on antidepressants, kind of clawed my way back to some sort of. Um, rational thought, which took a while. But basically, I, I stayed in school until I was 17, where I still was kind of played with this depression, and I was like, "I'm done. I need to leave." Which, to the rather large disagreement from my parents, I was, I, I did. I left, and I knew I had to do something because otherwise, I would just go crazy. So I started modelling, and. I wanted to do it. I wanted to work every day.、Oh, wait a minute. How old were you now? You're eighteen. Seventeen. Seventeen. So this was. I left school early. I didn't finish my last、right. year. I mean, of course, there's an upside. Yeah, there's been a lot of upsides. And you. It was more like the external life. I couldn't be luckier, more blessed. But the internal battles that were going on were just. I also felt like I never deserved any of it. That I was living someone else's dream. It. This point is just about like. Being able to show, like, have a mirror up at yourself and really look inside for what you need. And what happened was, I eventually said no, and I eventually took a break. But yeah, so I said no. I went. I started writing. Writing was something that really saved my life.、Um, again, so that pro- poem probably came out then. It was like I would write and I would read what I'd written, and it was like someone else was talking to me. I was like, what? Is that how I feel? It was a very strange experience.、Um, and then after that. I found yoga, which was a huge thing for me. I didn't cry a lot. I thought emotion as a kid was a weakness. I thought that if you are emotional, that like you know that's like a pan, like just a silly thing to feel.、Um, and when I went to yoga, I went. I started yoga as a superficial thing because I was like, I want to be flexible and fit, you know, like cool yoga people are. And I went in to my yoga meet my guru, yoga person, and. And、um, he was like, "Why are you doing this?" And I told him why. And he sat me down, and we just started chanting. And I was like, "Are we not meant to be doing like whatever?" So I was chanting. I got so angry with myself. No、oh、God. <laughs> and I broke through something, and I burst into tears, which I hadn't done in years. And I looked at him, and I was like, "What the hell is wrong with you? How dare you? You're a monster. Why would you do this?" And he was just laughing at me. And I was like. You're a crazy man. What is wrong with you? And he said, "If you hadn't have cried, I would have been very worried." 
And I was like, okay. He was like, and also you realize that this is the first time you've actually looked at me in the eye. And the reason why is because I knew when I looked in his eyes that he saw through me and he knew me and it freaked me out. But till this day, I've been seeing him a lot. It's like finding, finding people around you who have your best interest at heart. I had a lot of people around me who were just after what I gave them, not like, you know, after like looking after you and stuff. So it's about finding people who care about you and support. Um, and again, I've now become and been able to be a support for other people as well. So in turn, that kind of goes around. Mm. But I have so many messages in terms of just young girls and how the mental illness and depression is not something to be ashamed of. And I wish at that time I had realized that other people go through it, that I can talk to other people, that you're not alone, you're not an alien. Um, and, you know, my message has always been to accept yourself no matter what, to love yourself, to embrace your flaws. I think flaws are the things that make us special. The cracks within us are the beautiful parts that need to have light shed on them, otherwise they're just left. Um, and also, women are great. They're wonderful, wonderful creatures. Women are the bearer of life. And I think it took an experience um, of going to a talk by a woman who dealt with so much... Um, you know, in like all these women here are so incredible. Like the last talk, you know, I watched her on YouTube and it made me cry. And we witnessed these extreme experiences that happen to women, suppression and all these other things. But really that happens every day and we're all used to it in the workplace, in relationships. Women are constantly suppressed, but it takes an extreme circumstance for us to realize it because we're used to it. And that always confuses me a lot. But obviously, I think we're changing that now, slowly but surely. But yeah, just the point of like supporting each other and reaching out and communicating, it's the most important thing. Mm. So I want to help, basically. I don't know how, if anyone has any suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a little quote to say, which I made up, which is, uh, be comfortable in your own shoes, which apparently I'm not, which is really bad. <laughs> be comfortable in your own shoes, because you're going to be in them for a while. So that's my last message cool. to everyone. Well done, that was good.